Yeah, earlier on we had a, uh, I guess maybe someone forgot to mute themselves as they were coming in. Um, so yeah, this afternoon we've got Mark and, and, and Kerry Aguirre who are our guest speakers. Uh, maybe a lot of you might know them. Uh, they've been married for a period of about 28 years. Uh, Kerry has been a disciple for a period of 35 and, and Mark a period of 30, 30 years. And they've got about four uh, uh, children. And uh, they're very passionate about the marriage ministry. Uh, there's quite a, a lot of workshops that they have done. Uh, amongst them is the five love languages. Uh, they've done the coffees, and uh, they've also done the fireproof um, marriage uh, workshop. So we definitely are looking forward uh, to listening and, and learning from them uh, this afternoon. So at this time, uh, um, to Mark and, uh, and Kerry Aguirre. Amen. Okay. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's a really, really uh, very special and wonderful to be with all of you. Uh, thank you so much, Jumfunda, to, to, to the leadership, William, Martha, thank you so much okay. for the invitation. We feel uh, very honored to be with, with you guys today. Um, maybe we can just start off with a prayer and then we'll jump right in. Um, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for the opportunity to be with uh, each other. Thank you for the marriages um, in, in the church, Father. Thank you for the opportunity to, to learn together, to share together, really to bring you honor through this very special relationship that you've created called marriage. I pray that you'd be with us over the next little while as, as we share. Uh, Father, I pray that our hearts would be wide open to your word and to your dreams of what um, you see marriage to be, Father. Thank you for this time. I love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, just going to ask if everybody could mute. Uh, I think, uh, William, if you can just keep an eye on that. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, if you can let me share my screen, William. Uh, at the moment, I'm not allowed to. If you could just uh, give me that permission. Thanks. Okay, we're in the middle. Okay. You can go ahead, Mark. Okay, um, I'm just admitting a few other people that have just joined. Um, we'll have to... All right. Okay, great. So, um, welcome to those who are just joining. Um, we are going to go ahead and share our screen. I hope you guys can see that. William, just let us know if that, uh, if that is visible. You, uh, okay, so That's visible. Okay, fantastic. Well, uh, as I said, um, wonderful to be with all of you. Um, and, uh, you know, Kerry and I, as, as William was sharing, we've been married almost 20, uh, 28 years. It'll be um, in a couple of days' time. Um, very grateful for this wonderful relationship that God has given us. And today we're going to be talking about spiritual intimacy. And we're ex you know, really excited to share some principles and practicals about and around intimacy. Now, I want to put a disclaimer that, you know, we've made a lot of mistakes in this area. We've been taught a lot and we're still learning and we're certainly not experts in this. So just wanted to share that. But let me ask you this. I mean, what is the first thing um, you think of when you hear the word intimacy? Okay, now for most men, intimacy is spelled S-E-X. Okay, for most women or many women, intimacy is spelled T-I-M-E or T-A-L-K, time or talk. But as we'll see as we go through this devotional this morning or this afternoon, that God spells intimacy O-N-E, one. So it's amazing, you know, how we can interpret intimacy. And what we're going to do today is really dig into God's word and just look at, you know, some, some aspects of spiritual intimacy that I think are going to really help us. So let's jump right in. 
We're going to start with, off with a passage from Genesis chapter 2 uh, and verse 18. Uh, let's see here. Oh, here we go. Um, I think we're all familiar with this passage. And um, it says here, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable uh, for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. And he brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he thought... So, and he brought her to the man, and the man said, This now, bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. This is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. So, so we see here that God designed marriage to be the most intimate of all human relationships um, in which we actually share our, our spiritual life, our intellectual life, our social, emotional, and physical life together. And as we read this passage, um, what we see is some really some key principles that God shares about intimacy. Number one is they were suitable and helpful for each other. She was a part of him. You know, they were to prioritize this relationship above all others. What's interesting is Adam and Eve didn't even have parents. But in verse 24, it says that's why a man will leave his father and his mother. They didn't even have a father and mother. Yet he's describing the importance of leaving other relationships to make sure that this relationship is prioritized. So it's this idea of being one and being united. And what's amazing in, in verse 25, it says they had no shame. There was a deep sense of closeness and of safety and of vulnerability in this relationship, which is amazing. So, so God created this marriage relationship, as I said, to be the most intimate of all relationships, more intimate than any other relationships that we have, whether it's with our family, right? You know, um, sometimes our family can be, we can have very close relationships with a brother, a sister, or a parent. But marriage is to be the most intimate of those. Maybe we have, uh, you know, close friendships with uh, friends or disciples or colleagues. Or maybe it's your bank manager. Maybe you don't like that relationship too much, but it's very close. Or it's with your pet. I know some people are crazy about their pets. You know, I, I imagine that Adam, you know, as God is bringing all these Adam, uh, animals to him, he says, man, God, I really, I really can connect with this gorilla. <laughs> you know, you know? Uh, it's a little bit hairy, but, you know, I can really connect with it. Well, maybe that would have ended there, but thank God it didn't. God knew what we needed. He knew exactly what we needed. And so today, as we, as we look at spiritual intimacy, which is one of the dimensions of intimacy, firstly, we want to maybe describe or define what is it. When we talk about spiritual intimacy, what is it? Well, it's the process of opening our hearts that that deep part of our hearts to each other as we strive to get close to God. Let's put it in another way. It's really a sense of unity, uh, a, a mutual commitment to God's purpose for our lives and our marriage. And what's amazing about when we connect spiritually, what it does is it opens the door for strong and powerful emotional and physical closeness. Uh, with one another, unlike anything else. You know, they often say that physical attraction and emotional attraction is what brings us together, but it's spiritual intimacy that keeps us together. That is the glue. Mm. And so this is something that's really, really important to God 
and obviously then needs to be important to us. You know, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31, um, Paul, Paul says the same thing. Uh, we're just moving the slide here. Whoops. Um, the, Paul is actually saying the same thing. He says here in, in verse 31, For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. And he says something kind of strange in verse 32. He says, this is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. And you're like, okay, what, what, what is actually going on here? And what he's letting us know um, is, is that what our marriages are really all about um, is reflecting Christ and the church. So God wants our marriages to be a living reflection of the gospel. Think about that, that your marriage is meant to reflect the gospel. Mm -hmm. To the degree that we are spiritually intimate, we will experience and we testify, in fact, about God's love for us in Christ. To a world that is broken with many, many broken relationships. That is what God is saying here, is that, let your marriage reflect me. Let your marriage reflect me. So the ultimate purpose of marriage is to reflect to the world the kind of relationship that Christ has with his church. Now, what are those qualities? I mean, what are the qualities that Christ demonstrates in relationship to his church? Remember, he calls his church his bride. Remember that? So what are those qualities that should be reflected in our marriage in the same way that Christ has with his church? Think of, think of some of those. I mean, think of his devotion first to God, his unconditional love towards the church, his desire to be united and one and to build up this, this bride, to, to serve, um, to sacrifice, his willingness just to forgive. Hey, I mean, how often have we been forgiven? Um, his patience with us as a church, his kindness, his joy, you know, how he celebrates us and, and how he's so generous. And there's so many other words. But this is, the, this is the, the kind of commitment Jesus has to his church and obviously the kind of commitment that we as a church um, give back to Jesus. So that is amazing. So what we wanted to do is just, we wanted to talk about a few things. Firstly, what are some of the characteristics of a spiritually intimate marriage? And we'll get into some practicals and then we'll just touch on some barriers that I think, um, you know, I think will be really helpful. So let's talk about a couple of these characteristics of a spiritually intimate marriage. Firstly, one of the characteristics is, is that two people, husband and wife, are committed to growing not only in their relationship with God, but also in their relationship with each other. Mm -hmm. so, so we're reaching up to God together, but we're also reaching up to, together and growing spiritually. Another, mm -hmm. uh, another, um, another sort of characteristic is just having an openness of heart towards your spouse. Feeling safe to really open up and, and talk about what's going on, whether it's good or bad or even ugly, that... That, you know, we have this safe space where we can trust each other. That our spouse will still love us, you know, value us uh, because of the unconditional love for each other. Do we have that safe space in our marriages mm -hmm. where we can really be vulnerable and open? Another characteristic is that we share some, some core and, 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 you know, common spiritual values and goals and purposes that that we, 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 we're thinking the same, we, we, we're aligned, we're like, man, this is what we want for each other. And we'll talk a little bit more about this in a, in a minute. But that we have a common goal and a common purpose and common values. We're not going in different directions. Another quality is that we have a consistent prayer life. Not only ourselves individually, but also with our spouses. And then maybe lastly, that we have a shared commitment to studying and and memorizing God's word. We understand the power of God's word in our lives, but also, um, you know, with each other and how powerful it can be. As we share. Oh. Sorry, guys, can you just mute? 
There we go. All right. All right. Next slide, babes. I'm going to share. Okay, go for it. It's my turn just for a little bit. Let me just first say hello to everybody. And I know that Marcus said thank you, but I also want to say thank you so much for this opportunity to share. Um, Actually, you guys have given us an opportunity even to grow in our spiritual intimacy by putting this together. It's been challenging, but it's been wonderful. And I don't know what your view of marriage was before you got married or even where we're sitting today. I know that um, as a non-Christian, I was not going to get married. I had my ambitions and what I wanted to do in life. And I wasn't super inspired by the marriages that I saw. And so I had decided I wasn't going to get married. And then I became a disciple. Thank Jesus and thank God for that. And I saw relationships around me that were inspiring. That's I was blown away. I saw true marriage. I saw true partnership. I saw true intimacy. And yet I still think I had this fairy tale, almost fairy tale um, idea of marriage that it just sort of worked. Now that we're disciples, marriage would just work. And that a marriage now was going to make me happy. And I remember hearing for the first time that marriages are not necessarily to make us happy, but holy. And I thought, oh. Oh boy. Okay. Wait a second. Maybe I should go back to my idea of non-marriage, but actually what I will say is it is wonderful having a, a, a marriage as disciples. Mark, there's been so much happiness. We don't even have time to list it all, but it really is also to make us holy. And I love God's plan that he came up with this relationship, not just to meet our need for companionship and take away loneliness, but also that he has a spiritual plan for our lives. And the longer I'm married, the more I understand when Mark was studying the Bible, the brother studying with him, who was leading the church here in South Africa at the time said, if this guy makes it, he is the one for you. And I was super excited about that because there was that magic with Mark. But the longer we're married, the more I understand that. Mark and I are so different. And even spiritually, we're different. And yet that is so good because I can learn so much and I can be a suitable helper for him. And I'm super grateful for the many, many, many couples that God has put in our lives to help us learn, to be examples for us. Um, really, it is because of God, because of my husband, and because of so many couples and because of his word that we are where we are, sitting here together today. Um, and so what I also want to share is that what I think is so wonderful, Mark and I are not a ministry couple. We are, we are a couple. We have secular jobs. Mark works for Hope. I teach French. And yet seeing what Paul said in Ephesians 5, that God actually wants through our marriage, wants us to be able to impact the world and, and be a light for the world and, and reflect Jesus and his relationship with the church and the church's relationship in, as Mark mentioned, a world that is so broken relationally, it is just amazing. And I really, my prayer, we've been praying that each of us will catch that dream and that vision for our own marriages, that when the times are tough, we're reminded God has a spiritual plan for our marriage. And I know for me, when I do best in my marriage is, is when I remember that Jesus is Lord. And when I strive to make him Lord, we're going to, as Mark mentioned, talk about hindrances and, and, and ideas of building spiritual intimacy. But sometimes it's, it's challenging. Sometimes we feel frustrated and remember that Jesus is Lord. And when you remember that and strive to make him Lord, sisters, God will encourage you and use your marriage to do things you never even imagined. I'm so glad that I am a Christian and that God changed my mind and that we are married today. Amen. And everybody said, amen. Um, yeah. And so, you know, as we looked at, as we looked at some practical ways to increase our spiritual intimacy and because of the importance of it. And 
the impact it can have on the world, but also on our children. It's, you know, it's really important that our children see us united spiritually as well. But, uh, you know, two key mindsets, or call them heart sets, that we've learned around um, spiritual intimacy is firstly, is it starts by striving to have a great marriage, not settling for okay, not saying, okay, well, you know, you know, sometimes somebody asks you, how's your marriage going? And you kind of look at each other and you kind of, you know, I wonder what she's going to say. I wonder what he's going to say. Ever been there? And, and you know, it's, but, but it, it means that, no, I'm, we're striving to be the best that we can be for God, for each other, for our children, for the world. So that's the first thing. It's that mindset that we're going to strive for great marriages. And number two is it's also doing whatever it takes to remove the barriers that hinder intimacy. And we'll talk more about this, but it's whether it's confessing sin or sharing struggles, uh, going after the help you need. Uh, you know, I'll be honest, brothers and sisters, I've just heard too many couples that say, I'll call you when we need help. Mm-hmm. And you know when they call you? When the house is on fire. When it's too late. When it's when, when, when you know, things are burning. And, and it's just tragic that, you know, we've left it so late. Mm-hmm. And I, I just pray and hope that you know, that's not us, that we're going help because we, we, we want to honor God. So let's make this practical. Um, you know, so what can we do to grow in our spiritual uh, intimacy? Um, so firstly, um, you know, start by making a commitment to each other that you will seek to grow spiritually as a couple. So in other words, look in your spouse's face today and say, I'm committed to myself growing spiritually but helping us as a couple mm. grow spiritually um you know write down the date you know whether it's today write it down i we mark i i'm committed to you carrie to growing spiritually it's almost like renewing your wedding vows remember you know you see people do that and they say you know those wedding vows hi darling i love you and da 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 and, and you know but but make that renew that commitment Renew that commitment to um, renew that commitment to to be connected to 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 you know to grow spiritually. Number two, begin or continue praying f- uh, for each other or with each other and your marriage regularly. You know, share your personal par- prayer requests. Talk about what you're praying for. Please, you know, um, help. You know, pray pray for this. In my life, I'm really struggling. I'm, I'm battling. Do it again. Sorry, we've got we're admitting some people. Admit. Um. So so pray together. Are we are we praying together? You know, there's an old saying that you know families that pray together stay together. You may have you may have heard that, but but make you know ask you know what can I pray for t- t- today, um and and pray together. Uh, Kerry's going to share a little bit about that. This has been something that is, has really encouraged me in the last year. With when COVID started, <laughs> I was quite desperate to be able to go out, and and we couldn't for a long time. So I started doing prayer walks around our neighborhood, and I committed, without knowing about this class, but just to praying for Mark every single day. You know, sisters, we know our husbands better than anybody. We see our husbands more than anyone. And he would bring things up with work or he was feeling. And it, it's been amazing. There are times I'm walking and praying for him. And it's like the Holy Spirit is saying, go in and tell your husband this. I have this message for him. And to walk in, and he's been so encouraged by that. And it really has been something that has deepened our spiritual intimacy, our relationship. So if you're not doing that already, I really, really want to encourage you to do that. It's been incredible. Amen. Uh, you know, the, the third thing is calling each other or emailing or, or sending, a, a, you know, a WhatsApp message, um, or, you know, with, with an inspiring Bible verse or some, some sort of affirming thought on a regular basis. You know, so, so maybe, maybe your spouse is going into an important meeting or having a job interview or, or, or maybe it's something more serious, you know, that she's got a doctor or he's got a doctor's appointment or there's a special event coming up, an anniversary. And, you know, I've been so encouraged when, when Kerry will just send me a message saying, thinking about you, remember, 
that God is with you, or, you know, um, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, or whatever it might be. Uh, you know, never underestimate how powerful these little, these little messages are and can be. You know, whether it's on a special occasion or an important event, even, even any time, just remembering them, you know, how much you value them, how important they are to God. And so that, that's another one. And, um, you know, setting spiritual goals as a couple. Now, these could be daily or weekly or monthly or even annual goals. You know, for example, you could focus on, you know, I, I want to come to praying more together. Um, memorizing scripture more together, or even serving in ministry in some way together. Let's do that. Let's get into that teen ministry or get into serving a church or, or whatever it might be, or, you know, evangelizing together or, mm. or, or just let's get to, you know, make sure that we're having some joint daily time with the Lord together. It's so important that we decide not, not many goals, but on a few goals, spiritual goals that we can work on together. Okay. Um, now this has been something that's, been incredibly special for me and Mark. And I just want to share a few of our goals over the years. Uh, we uh, kind of an ongoing goal is that we study with a couple together. Um, and being able to do that has just been, we've done it a few times over the years. It's been amazing. And right now we don't have a couple. So it's something we're praying for together and looking for. And it's, you know, you meet someone and you it, it, it's nice to discuss, do you think it's them? Is this who God's going to open their heart? But that's been an incredible goal. Um, also helping other couples grow spiritually, discipling other couples. I mean, when we first got married, obviously we were learning a lot and God was teaching us a lot, but I think that's all always a need in the kingdom is just for us as couples to support one another and share what we're learning and be there for each other. Um, obviously, a big one for us is seeing our children become disciples and praying for them together and um, sharing and, and coming up with ideas of how we can help in their journeys. And kind of a last one that, that is a bit of more of a long term, we have a goal for our retirement that we would love both of us being able to speak French and English and mark a bit of Spanish, me no Spanish, but we would love and we, we talk about this often to travel all over Africa and just be able to encourage the churches, um, be able to go and share our experiences and so it's fun to dream about that together and put that before God and have that as a spiritual goal. Amen. Um, you know, another one is, you know, reading a book together or watching a movie together that is faith-based, that is spiritual, you know, talking about it. What did you like? What did you didn't like? Didn't you like, you know, questions that it raised for you, things that challenged you about it. You know, we, as um, William was sharing, we, we've been able to do things, um, you know, together. Uh, we've watched Fireproof, The Passion. I don't know if you guys know that the series called The Chosen, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, it's in season two, I think episode four or five right now, about Jesus. Just a, a fresh take on who Jesus wa uh, was and how he interacted with people. Um, you know, we haven't read that many books together, but I know we do a lot of reading and we share what we are reading. Um, Carrie's into the Bema podcast right now, if you've heard of Bema. It's, a, it's an exploration of the Bible from the Eastern point of view, from a Jewish point of view. Very exciting. And I'm reading about meditation. So we're constantly sharing about what we're reading. And, you know, these are opportunities just to share with each other um, and, 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 and watch and read things together. Another one um, is, you know, sharing your deeply held hopes or dreams with each other and committing to praying each other around them you know even even if it can't directly help them to accomplish them you know i'm in this business and they're in this one but just letting them know that you're a hundred percent behind them that you are totally and and both carrie and i have goals and dreams as carrie said whether it's for ourselves for our children um you know rallying out what can we do better what can we do together uh, and, and 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 being committed to just praying for that and you know um you know that's something that's really important to us um, and then, and then, lastly, just a couple of thoughts is memorizing or sharing scripture together. I think we've talked a little bit about this, but choosing passages that are particularly relevant or meaningful to you. So, Carrie and I are constantly sharing scriptures. Uh, we, we we share, you know, did you hear this song? You know, we heard this on the radio or this spiritual song. There's a there's a song called Blessings, 
uh, we were just talking about it, about a, a couple where the, the, the husband had a tumor um, that has left him basically with little short-term memory. And they've had to reconstruct their lives. And she sings the song about how some of the toughest times in, in our lives can actually be the greatest blessings. That God uses sometimes the things he hates to, to produce the things he loves. Mm. And so just being able to share at that level is incredibly special. Mm. Um, and then I skipped one here, but it's finding an area of ministry in which you can participate together as a couple. Mm. I just wanted to share a little bit about this. I think um, there are so many needs in the kingdom. And married couples, as married couples, we can lend a maturity, a stability. Um, and Mark and I, over the years, we've been able to, to serve in a lot of different ways that are really incredible. And and you build special memories together. I was thinking, he mentioned the fireproof. I will never forget. Probably everyone else who was there has forgotten. But we opened it with, I was lighting little candles on the stage. And then I pretended to, to mess it up. And Mark came charging in in this fireman's outfit with a hose and put it out. For me, that is locked in my memory as a fun, funny I think we probably thought it was the most entertaining more than anyone else, but it is a great memory. Um, we, we've been able to do step up together, uh, which was supporting teen parents in un unity and in purpose on Friday nights. And again, lots of different classes, but for me, one of the funniest memories was standing up in church on a Sunday morning and introducing it. And we made up this little dance move. And so it's not always serious, serious, serious things that are binding us together spiritually. It's also the fun memories and the planning together, watching Mark teach Kids Zone together and just roll around on the floor with the kids. And it also, I mentioned earlier, we are very different. Sometimes putting together these classes... <laughs> We have very different styles of preparation. And so it doesn't come without conflict. I'm quite, um, uh, Mark likes to think and reflect and, and edit. And I'm pretty much a get it down and get it over with. And so even these opportunities give us a chance to grow together, to resolve conflict together, to, you know, we are sinful and and in spiritual intimacy that's part of it is seeing each other's strengths and weaknesses and and working together but i think sisters and there are so many needs and i think it is a thing to think about with our husbands how can we serve is it discipling is it in kids zone is it um just going to the leaders of the region and saying what needs to be done how can we help out um yeah it's been awesome amen well you know I know for us, like Gary Shin, we, we still got a lot of areas to grow in. Um, we'd love to hear from you how you're growing in your spiritual intimacy. I think we can learn from each other for sure. But, you know, often we don't experience this type of spiritual intimacy in our marriages. This type of spiritual intimacy can be actually a, a common struggle for many of us. And in fact, in our marriage counseling, we've really heard someone, you know, a couple say, Spiritual intimacy is definitely our strong point. We've totally nailed it. We've got it together. We don't need help. Um, and it's certainly for us, we've, um, we've had our highs and our lows, uh, you know, around spiritual intimacy, and we've needed that help. But let me ask, I mean, where do you find your marriage today? Maybe you feel a deep sense of spiritual intimacy in your marriage, and, you know, and some of, these, some of these points can help you and thrive and and, 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 you know, grow even more. Or maybe today your marriage is in a position of, you, you're just surviving. You're not thriving, especially spiritually. You know, maybe for other marriages today in, on, this, on this call, you're not even surviving. You know, in fact, this area of your relationship, spiritual intimacy might not even exist at all. And I think it's really important as a starting place to, uh, to reflect on where are we? Where are we? And, and what are those things that are really hindering us from growing spiritually? And I think what we want to do is, is just quickly go through some of these. Um, I know that have affected us um, and we can share about them, but let's go through some of these. Uh, you know, one of the, one of the areas is, is laziness and selfishness. Sometimes, you know, we know that we need to be spiritually intimate. We know that we need to be connected with God. 
and, and be connected with each other spiritually, but we're just actually too lazy. We're preoccupied by many other tasks, selfish desires, and, and we know what we need to do, but we, we don't do that. And the way to combat this is by being diligent and making the effort. I don't know about you, but marriage takes work. I'm sure a lot of people are nodding their heads. It takes work. It's not this beautiful jungle where everything just grows organically. It takes work. It's like, an, it's like a garden. You've got to dig and you've got to plow and you've got to prune. And, you know, and if anybody's told you otherwise, that's not true. You know, are we still working on our marriage? The next one is fatigue. Anybody ever get tired? Get busy? Yeah. You know, um, you know, a great time to pray or discuss what we're learning spiritually is when we go to bed at night. But sometimes we're just so exhausted. I mean, I think Carrie and I have prayed with either she's praying and I've fallen asleep or I'm praying and suddenly I hear. Oh, no, you don't hear that. No, she never. Anyway, it's, it's only me that falls asleep. But we're so exhausted, you know, looking for ways to find time. Um, you know, maybe we need to have a conversation about our schedules. What is a good time to to connect? Maybe it's, you know, after the, you know, you say goodnight to the kids or, or whatever, or maybe it's in the first thing in the morning, to have a, 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 a time together to chat, you know, be creative about that. So you're not so exhausted, you, you've got nothing, nothing left. I know for us, Sunday evenings is just a useful time to plan. Uh, we were sharing with the guys as we started this, we cycle, Kerry and I cycle together every Saturday. And on our way there, we, we just have a great time of prayer. It's about half an hour away. Um, but, you know, pray in the evenings, on trips, whatever you're doing, it's awesome to pray together. Oh. Um, the next one is <laughs> idolatry. And basically, idolatry is putting something above God and above what's important to God. And that could be television, social media, our careers, our schedule. It could even be people pleasing. We, we say yes to everything. We, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Or maybe it's reading or exercising or I don't know, whatever it is. And, and so not that these things are bad, but what they do is they steal and they rob us of our times with God and our times with each other. You know, and, and like fatigue, you know, what can you remove from your life that is robbing you of really having that spiritual intimacy that, that calls us to? I know for me, it can be work. Uh, the guys who work at Hope on this call know that. It can be social media. Let me just check. Let me just quickly catch up. Oh, Instagram and Facebook. And, you know, and I've got to be so mindful of that. And I need to repent of that. Because suddenly, before you know it, an hour has gone. You've been on the news and you've been clicking all the news channels and, you know, or, or, or you know, getting up late. And we're not spending time anymore. Mm. I think for me as a uh, woman, there were two areas that... Uh, I really had to guard against, I, I, not only did I not want to get married as a non-Christian, I also wasn't going to have children. Well, that follows on. And so when I fell in love with Mark and he loves children, and obviously I wanted to have children, but I didn't feel like I had natural maternal instincts. And so there was something in me that just was pushing me to be a great mom and be involved. And, and it's very easy for us as women to to just consume our lives and our time with our children. And they do have needs and we have four, but as Mark is saying, I know I have to guard against prioritizing my children over God and, and my husband. And I think secondly, the world has opened up wonderfully for women in terms of careers. And, you know, 50 years ago, we weren't having these types of careers and the opportunities, but there are many, but I think sisters, we have, got to be careful that we don't seize these opportunities and make them our gods, make them almost like our right to this is who I need to be. This establishes who I am to the cost and detriment of our relationship with God and our, our marriage. Amen. The next one is, you know, different schedules. I don't know if you guys have got different schedules. Um, you know, sometimes your husband and wife, have different sleep and wake schedules, you know. Um, I'm, a, I'm a night owl. Anybody a night owl out there? Uh, I, I love to, you know, suddenly, hey, oh, it's 11 o'clock at night. And Carrie's, a, Carrie's like sleep by 9 o'clock. We were like, but she's up at 5. She's having a quiet time every day at 5. You know, I'm sort of groggy at 6. And I'm like, who am I? Who are you? 
you know, and, and I'm, I'm just getting the battery going, uh, charging. And so, so schedules can be a real challenge if we don't make time. And what they do, again, they rob us of that time, mm. that, that time alone, that intimate time to really talk. Um, so we've got to be creative about it. Don't just accept, well, well, she's, she, she wakes up early and I don't. So that, that's, that's how it is. The, the next one is uncomfortability. Now, what, I, what do I mean by that? You know, um, sometimes we don't even know how to share with our spouses. Our relationship with Jesus, we feel it's something very private uh, and we're uncomfortable to share about. It. Um, and I think as guys, often we struggle with that. The sisters are sharing. You're trying to pull them out of the fellowship. I know you brothers, you're smiling right now. I can see you guys. And we're like, come on, we need to get out of here. Because the sisters are just having a great time talking about their lives. We don't know how to be open. We don't know how to, you know, so we get uncomfortable. Um, and, you know, we've, we've got to learn how to, to comfortably share with each other. Mark is using the royal we. He actually, this is not an area of weakness for him. This was definitely more my area of weakness. Um, you know, culturally, one of my core values was independence. Uh, one of my core fears is unfair judgment, and my core sin is pride. And so that you pull those three things together, and it, it for a long time was so uncomfortable for me to share. Um, you know, I didn't feel like I needed to, um, I, I didn't necessarily want to, and I, I really saw for a long time it hindered our spiritual intimacy. Um, and, and so I think we need to be willing to look at ourselves and say, if I am uncomfortable, what is it about me that is stopping? Why do I feel uncomfortable and really go after it? Mark has been incredibly gracious and patient and helpful. But I know they say, you know, this is more of a man's problem. In our relationship, it was definitely more my problem. And I think sisters, we, you know, we, we mustn't just say, well, that's the guy's problem because some of us do struggle with this and, and yet I, we were missing out. And I'm, I'm very grateful for his help in helping me overcome this. Amen. The next one is insecurity and pride. And I, and I know no one can relate to this. It's something that we struggle with, but maybe you do. Um, and it's a close relative of uncomfortability, which is a sort of insecurity. We don't have the spiritual intimacy with God. We'd like to. Uh, so sharing with our spouse is something that is difficult. We feel guilt. We feel shame. We feel embarrassed. We sort of, we feel very guilty. And it's very hard just to be open. We almost feel like I've got to be this perfect Christian. And then I can share all these great insights about what we're doing. But, you know, the truth is we're broken. We're two broken, sinful people married to each other. And we've got to remember that. Amen. Well, I, I just shared that my core sin is pride. So, yes, again, this was, uh, this was much more my problem. But what I want to share as a practical is, again, these prayer walks. When I go out and I hash it all out with God and I apologize to God and I speak to God and I know I need help, it is so much easier than to come back and say to my husband, babe, I need to confess. Um, and he has been incredible listening, helping. Then I know he prays for me. So I just really want to encourage us to not let these things hinder our spiritual intimacy, but to really see them as gifts. Um, the, the fact that we can be open, that we can confess, that we can pray for each other. Let's not let insecurity and pride stop us. The last one we're going to do as we wrap up um, is broken trust and disappointment. And uh, there we go. <laughs> and, you know, at its core, uh, this is a huge challenge for many couples. Ever had your trust broken, uh, either with God or with your spouse? He let you down. She let you down. And so because either God has let us down or our spouse has let us down, we don't share anymore. We, you know, trust has been broken and you choose not to be intimate with them. Um, and trust is a huge deal in our relationships with God and with each other. You know, um, in Proverbs um, 3, uh, 5, 5 and 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean uh, uh, not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your heart right. I don't know if you've ever been disappointed by God. I certainly have. And I... I've, I've struggled with that. And my God, well, I don't understand. I'm trying to serve you and I'm trying to be my best. And, 
this is not going right, and this is not going right. And what happens is I shut down not only to God, but then it impacts my relationship with Mary. And, and now I don't want to talk. I don't really want to be real. And I'm grumpy and critical and cynical, and, and, and it hurts. And so you've got to be so careful that we put our trust in God, even if we don't understand like this passage. Um, how do we get okay. it? <laughs> so for me, um, yes, uh, unresolved hurt is uh, what can, for me, can, can be sort of this hindrance. And, you know, if you have been hurt in the relationship, um, sometimes it's hard to forgive. But what I have learned about my heart is that when I don't forgive and when I am not urgent about, about praying about forgiving, when I leave hurt unresolved, there is this bitterness that can grow up in my heart and this resentment. And it kills spiritual intimacy and this verse in hebrews is very helpful i mean it says see to it that no one falls short of the grace of god or misses the grace of god and what i've learned is when i am bitter i am not helping mark get the grace of god i am not he's going to fall short in our relationship because i am not extending god's grace when i forgive he can see god's grace we, we are going to hurt each other. I remember when I was young married, this, I, I said, but why does he hurt me so much? And the sister looked at me, okay, she was more mature. And she's like, but Carrie, you're the most intimate with him. Of, he knows you the best. Of course, he's going to hurt you the most. And I was like, well, this is kind of a weird plan. But it's an opportunity to grow in forgiveness and seeing God's grace. When we don't, it says a root of bitterness springs up to cause trouble and defile many. My lack of forgiveness, my bitterness, my resentment, my unresolved hurt causes trouble in our marriage. It causes trouble for my children and it can defile us and them. And so I really, I know we do get hurt and we're, we're going to continue that. But I, I, this verse is so powerful, sisters. Um, and I think sometimes as women, we are more prone to bitterness, to resentment. I really want to challenge myself and, and all of the sisters. Don't let roots of bitterness grow up. Be, be challenging with yourself to to root it out to forgive to be open about hurt and to resolve hurt feelings as we wrap up guys um just where do we where do we take this from here and so firstly is just remembering why god designed marriage be united be united with him with each other spiritually emotionally physically intellectually and so think about what are the practical ways you can build that intimacy? But also think about what are, what are the barriers that you struggle with most? You know, husband, what are, the, what are these barriers of the ones we've listed and you have the recording? You know, we've had to look at them and, and you know, Kerry has told me, look, I'd like you to get, wake up earlier so that we can spend time, you know? What are the solutions that you and your spouse can brainstorm together to overcome some of these barriers? You know, we love the scripture um, that says, a two are better than one um, because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them. What is that third strand? You know, um, it's actually not even in here. <laughs> but it, it talks about this is in, in uh, talks about that God is the, it's the third strand. That three are even better. You know. Um, and, and, and that third strand is God. And as we strive for our relationship with God, this is the formula. As we, as, we, as we strive in our relationship with God, and I'm sure you've seen this together, look at what happens to husband and wife. They get closer and closer and closer. And what that does is it impacts not only your life, but you, now you reflect the gospel. Your marriage, our marriage, is to reflect the gospel to this broken world and to bring hope. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, we really appreciate the time. I hope this has been really you know, helpful. We look forward to hearing and learning from you guys as well about what's helping you build intimacy. So thank you so much.
Um, back over to Funda and William. Wow, what an amazing uh, lesson uh, that you presented to us, uh, Mark and, Ke and, and Kerry. Um, you took such a, a complicated uh, or a difficult topic and you just made it very simple. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time uh, just to invest in, in preparing this lesson for us. Um, at this time, we, we're going to open it up uh, for a time of questions. Uh, so if uh, you've got any questions, please uh, do post them on the chat box. Uh, but whilst um, and maybe we, we're still waiting uh, uh, for people to post uh, some of their questions, I, I wanted to find out, maybe you can talk to this uh, uh, Kerry and, and Mark. I mean, the way you presented the lesson, it sounds so simple. And, and yet, though, in the beginning, you did mention that uh, marriage, it's, it's a lot of hard work. Let's say we are a couple and uh, we feel like, man, we aspire uh, what you just presented. It's great and, and would like to have it, but we don't know where to start. Uh, how would you go about it? Or, or maybe you can even talk about the turning point that came in your lives as to what is it that made you to to wanna go after this spiritual intimacy thanks thanks bro i really appreciate it i think the starting point is remembering why god created marriage like Kerry said there's a there's a book called god didn't make marriage to make you happy but to make you holy and i think if we can start by remembering the the purpose of marriage the sense of belonging this oneness this, um, this desire to honor God, the importance of marriage, and, and, and then aspiring to make our marriage is great. I think what we've done is we've gone through many seasons in our marriage where, um, you know, we, you know, we're madly in love with each other, and then, uh, you know, we're helping each other, and then we became, well, you know, we're there, and we became roommates, um, and then we're sort of living past each other, and we've got to keep reminding ourselves you know, that marriage is the most important and intimate relationship that God has designed. So it starts from that godly perspective. So if you don't have that, that is something to meditate on, to go back to the scriptures, to, to remember and to remind ourselves of that importance. And in fact, as we were preparing this message, we were like, wow, you know, I think we've let something slip. This is what marriage is all about. And then and then after that, I would say taking maybe some of the practicals that we've put about how we grow together, uh, how we build intimacy, how we can be praying together, memorizing scripture, encouraging each other spiritually, but also looking at what are the barriers. You know, the, there was a, set, a list of seven there and looking at them and, and talking through them as a couple. What about this? Oh, yeah, you, 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 you're really bad at that. Okay, maybe don't say it that way. <laughs> but, you know, talking through. What are the barriers with lots of grace and humility, um, you know, to your beautiful wife? You know, if, if you if you could, what would really help me is if you did this. What if it would really help me if we prayed more together? Um, if, if you woke up, if, if work wasn't such a big deal um, and, and looking at those barriers. So I would start with, you know, how God sees marriage and how he prioritizes marriage, how you can build spiritual intimacy um, you know, uh, opportunities, and then and make sure you're dealing with the, the barriers and repenting of those sin that are stopping you. I would just say a word to the brothers in particular, you know, guys, impurity, pornography, um, uh, emotional relationships in the workplace, those things kill spiritual intimacy. And we've got to be so careful, so careful of those things as well. So look for the you know, get that godly perspective, look at opportunities and practicals, and then make sure you're dealing with the hindrances. Yeah. I just, um, going to the question, I do think what a, a turning point for me was really looking at myself, not waiting for Mark to change, but taking responsibility for what in me, whether it was my outlook on marriage my um, expectations, my own sin, but really taking responsibility to be the kind of wife, the, first of all, the kind of disciple, the kind of daughter of God that God wanted me to be. And, and obviously we'll never be perfect, 
but looking at myself and deciding that that no matter what season Mark is going through, who, what is the picture of the woman that God has created that he wants me to be? It, it helps me in, in all my weaknesses. It helps me stay a lot more humble and be a lot less critical of Mark. And because of course he's got weaknesses. We both do. But I think when I focus on what can I change, how can I grow? It's, it, it, it's me and, it, you know, it does unite me to God. And then I, then I can be a lot more gracious with Mark um, and, and share things in, from a more humble perspective on what, I mean, he shared some things I've mentioned that I would love for him to change, but I cannot force him to change. We cannot force each other to change. We can only change ourselves. And, um, and uh, there are passages in the Bible that talk about that, that when the one spouse changes, it has a huge impact. Um, and I don't know if that's just God blessing the, our own repentance or I, I, God, it moves in mysterious ways, but I do think part of the turning point is looking at self. How can I change first and be the person God wants me to be? And that adds, and then sharing that with my spouse. I mean, um, thanks for, um, and, and I think again, I, I just, uh, we, we appreciate your vulnerability, uh, the way you, you openly spoke about, uh, about your weaknesses. Um, and, and, and definitely, uh, Mark, your sense Chad. of humor, uh, did help. Can I please ask Mark if you, uh, could assist with, uh, muting? Because you're yeah. still the one who is uh, the host. We've, we've actually given it over to William and Martha, the host. If William and Martha, uh, I hope we've sent it to the right. If you guys could mute everybody. Or, uh, yeah. Thanks. Thank you so much. So go, go for it. Go. Hello? All right. Okay, okay great. So they... Sure. So there's another question that uh, Neo is asking. So his question is time uh, for building this oneness. Sorry, it's breaking up a little bit. Uh... Manage your busy schedule. To How do you manage your busy schedule uh, to make time for wellness? I think, I think, make you know, I think, uh, oh, we've got an echo of there. Sorry, guys. Um, I think, I think what's really important is realizing that we actually do have enough time. Um, I think what happens is we, we, we get very busy because sometimes we don't create the boundaries. You know, God doesn't want us to be working 10, 12 hours a day. I mean, sometimes, yes, you know, there are seasons where you've got to do that, but um, we've, we've got to prioritize what is important. We've got to put what is important over the urgent. And I think sometimes, you know, I, I lead the hope work and we're in a very busy season right now. And I've got to make sure that I'm creating time for my relationship with God and my relationship with my wife. We go on a date night, no matter how busy it is, every Tuesday night, we go on a date night. Uh, I don't know if you guys are doing that. But I know we, we, we sort of fell out of that for a while and, and we saw it was hurting our relationship. And so we decided, you know what, every Tuesday night at about 6.30, we go and uh, grab a bite to eat. Um, and we're able to talk, uh, praying together, um, using opportunities during the day. So yes, we all got busy time, but use the opportunities through the day. Um, helping your wife, brothers, with hanging the laundry, <laughs> um, cooking. Come on, I see the sisters smiling away, cooking together, helping out, um, you know, and praying together and sharing dreams. Or there's a situation, can we quickly pray together as you're heading out? Go to the shops together and can we pray together? So I think we can we can create time during the day to make that happen. Mm. I mean, thanks. Um, I'm just having a challenge with the screen uh, I was using uh, for the questions. So if I can please ask you to go to the second question. I think it was okay. by Henry Boni. 
please you, you are asking you to speak more to the uh i just don't remember the question now but i think he was asking you to speak uh to the core values oh uh core values okay sure or spiritual values okay so goals. please elaborate on the point of core spiritual values so again i think um obviously you want to share uh, those things what are your spiritual values what are your what is your purpose? What are your goals? I think obviously some of that is defined um, by us as disciples. So Mark and I are both very uh, convicted about seeking and saving the lost. And that's why for us, one of our goals, we, we, we both love studying the Bible with people, but as married couples, I think we miss out if we're not studying with a couple. So that's one of our prayers. You don't always find a couple that wants to study, but we pray about it consistently. Please bring a couple into our lives. It doesn't mean that we don't study with, with a man or a woman individually when they come. We definitely do that. But we have a goal, and we put that before God, that we would love to do that. Mm -hmm. Also with our children. Um, I mean, obviously having three boys, I think the boys were more open with Mark. Maddie, our daughter, is more open with me. Uh, we protect their their privacy, but obviously we share with each other. We knew we wanted our kids to become disciples. So we would plan devotionals together. We talked about that together. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, and the other thing is, guys, and I, I want to speak to the men here. Um, COVID has messed us up. I think COVID has done a number on church and on marriages. We see that a lot of marriages are hurting right now. Um, and it's very sad to see that. But one of the things that I want to mention is that what we're seeing is, whether it's midweeks online, whether it's church, we're seeing, we're seeing couples protect each other from not attending and not being fully engaged. Oh, where's your husband? I don't see him on the call. Oh, uh, um, yeah, he had to, he had to uh, do, yeah. Uh, like, what's going on? And again, I'm not saying that work sometimes, you know, interferes with life, absolutely. Or you've got a child, you know, child that's busy with something that's important. But what I'm seeing is, and what we're seeing is that we start making excuses for each other. Rather than encouraging each other to be fully committed to, to the body, fully committed to the kingdom, fully committed to one another, fully committed to being devoted to each other, what's happening? Oh, uh, she couldn't make it. She's, um, yeah, she's busy. And, and we start making excuses. And so we mm -hmm. dilute those values and that sense of united purpose, you know, spiritual. And I'm saying brothers in particular, we need to be leading our families. And we should be ready to go. I mean, we should be, you know, the family devotionals and, you know, encouraging our wives to be radiant before the Lord. Uh, through the washing of the word. That's who we need to be. And if that's not us, let's repent. Mm -hmm. Let's not make excuses for our half-heartedness, our lukewarmness. You know, it starts with our relationship with God and our commitment to our spouse, to our children, and to the family. Amen. Amen. And then, um, I think earlier on I saw a hand. I'm just trying to find it so we got disconnected so we lost everything earlier on uh, so if you can please put up your hand i think i saw a hand earlier on uh, i if also that's... see a question from Tivofo. okay please please go ahead and read it mark because okay we... so sure. Yeah, sure the question is um and, and i'm sorry i'm missing a few so I'll, I'll go back to i see joyce has also put one but the question is can you expand on marriages may is is, is to make you holy and not happy now not to say that a marriage cannot make you happy you know this is not meant to be a very serious you know uh we cannot have any fun and it's just going to be uh you know really boring and you know oh please help me god that's not the, that's not what it's meaning i think what we're saying is that god puts us together and if you look at your spouse right now you're probably very different in many ways <laughs> we are we are incredibly different and what god does is he uses each other to refine, to expose, to, to sharpen, to cut, to, to improve, to reflect, 
so many things about our characters that are ungodly. And so God is constantly refining us because of this intimacy. People don't know me. I mean, and I'm not saying people don't know me, but a lot of people don't know the real Mark or the real Terry. They don't know where I mess up and that. So but Terry does. She knows me when I'm, you know, unspiritual and ungodly. And so she's there to, to, to point me back to God, to help me, to, to, to um, remind me of who I need to be in Christ. So I hope that answers your question, uh, it's, it's not that marriage isn't meant to be a, a joyous celebration, but it really is about refining. And sometimes we, we want it to be more about happiness than about holiness. Mm -hmm. My wife doesn't make me happy. She's never there for me. She's, and we, we point fingers um, at each other and we lose out on the opportunity to be more like Christ, more patient. So we, we tolerate our impatience. And if she wasn't more like this, I wouldn't be so impatient and angry. But what God is saying is, this is an opportunity for you to be gentle and patient, serving and kind, and, you know, and all the fruits of the Spirit. Amen? Can I share for a second? <clears throat> I th uh, yeah, I think Mark and I have had amazing, wonderful, good times. Uh, it, marriage is a blast. But um, I also, like he was saying, even... <laughs> Okay, so I'm independent. I uh, can my my core sins are just nasty. I mean, even critical, judgmental. That's probably why I don't like unfair judgment so much. But um, I'm not naturally a respectful, submissive person, and yet God has a wonderful role uh, designed for women that that I was not naturally bred that way. And, and yet he wants to form Christ in me. And so he's given me a man that is different to me that Mark loves it when I express respect. I mean, he's, he even said two weeks ago, I, I need you to be more verbally affirming and express how you need me. And I mean, this is 28 years into marriage. We're still working on these things, guys. We are definitely not the experts, but, but I think we have a mutual commitment to wanting to grow. Um, I, I need you to express the impact I have in your life. So all of those things, it's not easy to hear that. And I don't jump up and down. Yay, I feel so happy when you tell me what I need to change. And I would love to have the humility where I'm jumping up and down. But, but that's not going to come out in other relationships necessarily. But in my marriage, it's going to help me become more like Christ and to become more set apart. Holy means set apart. Um, set apart from the world. My marriage shouldn't look like a worldly marriage. I shouldn't look like a worldly wife. So it really is, it's to make us happy and maybe I should have said happy and hope. Amen. Uh, I see, I, I, I don't see hands, but I see another question from Joyce. If we have different sleeping times, does it have, um, does it have a big effect on our intimacy if one of us is a late sleeper and the other one is an early sleeper? You know, absolutely. I mean, I, I think the question is, you know, we, we can't use that as an excuse. We can't say, well, I'm just an early sleeper. Sorry for you. If we're not connecting spiritually, if we're not bonding spiritually, if we're not praying together, if we're not looking for opportunities and it's impacting our intimacy, we cannot use that as an excuse. If you're an early sleeper, well, then add an extra half hour. If you're, a, if you're a late sleeper, maybe get to bed earlier. You know, I mean, we've got to figure out where we can create opportunities to build spiritual intimacy and, and, and all types of intimacy. Um, you know, I hear of, of couples that sleeping in different rooms. You know, and again, there may be reasons for that, valid reasons for that. I'm not saying that. But, but you know, they live past each other. You, you know, it's, it's like... It, you don't have time, dedicated time, to build spiritual intimacy. And so, again, I'm a late sleeper, I, you know, but I've got to remember, okay, you know, um, you know, I, I need to be trying to, to, as much as possible, connect with my wife so that we can be uh, connected. So it does have an impact. And at least it has an impact on our spiritual intimacy. And, and as I said, Kerry even said, Mark, I, I really, it would really be helpful if you woke up earlier so that we can start the day together. And I'm not very good at that, I'll be honest. 
And I'm trying to do that. And from the month of June, I, I want to wake up a lot earlier. The month of June is I'm, I'm going to be doing a couple of things, a Daniel fast and a few other things, uh, because I really want to be uh, much more spiritual, both with God and obviously with my wife. I hope that answers that question. Good. Uh, just looking at other questions. If you've got a hand up, um, please unmute and, and uh, you know, uh, please share that with us. Or have we scared everybody off? I uh, know my start sees Sambula hand up. So yeah, go for it. Can can somebody uh, please yeah, please can unmute yourself. Go ahead, my start. Sorry, it was by mistake. I don't have my hand up. <laughs> I know you've got a question, oh. sis. I know you've got a deep, deep down inside <laughs> you do have a question. But we'll let it go. Brother Mfundo, back to you or William. Uh, thank you once more again. Just uh, even your your gracious spirit. Thanks off uh, uh, questions, of and then we really want to say uh, thank you so much to you, Algiras, uh, for great afternoon. It's been such a wonderful time to have you and uh, you speaking to us about uh, spiritual intimacy. Thank you so much for making time. I know you might have had. Uh, other things to do, but you decided to be with us here in Central so and Soweto. There are a number of regions that have joined, as I've said, we have Soweto and then together with Central and then the Sumtata and there are guys from Lesotho that have joined. I see Sorry. the Central East guys have also joined us and then it's been such a wonderful time for all of us. Would like to say thank you so much for making time and uh, sharing your thoughts, sharing your your life and uh, sharing scriptures with us. Uh, really, thank you so much. This has been very helpful for me personally. And then there are a number of things that we really need to put them practically in this lesson. Amen. Well, thank so you so we, much. We, 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 we were definitely, definitely uh, so happy to, to have you. And then also we want to thank everybody that has joined us and then this afternoon it's been such a wonderful time to have you and then I know that we had uh, about 66 devices connecting which will assume that is two by twos or one but it's been a, a good number of people that have joined to listen on this um, on these uh, lessons and uh, I will uh, also want to thank William and the team and then for such a great work that you continue to do in terms of organizing all these devotionals guys you are doing such an incredible job so i will uh, give to william just to do the announcements and then uh, before and then asking somebody to really pray amen so Ma willis um, um, maybe we can just um just say we, we love you guys uh we care deeply about the marriages um in the church we really really do and uh just you know guys let's fight for each other let's fight let's fight to i don't i'm, I'm not saying with each other i'm saying for each other let's <laughs> fight for our spirituality with god don't accept maybe your marriage is in a, in a bad state right now don't don't accept it come on don't be the victim get back on your feet God can turn any marriage around. Uh, and uh, we just thank you so much for this opportunity to speak into your lives. Uh, we love you guys and are praying that our marriages can glorify God. So thank you, Funda. Thank you, William. Really appreciate it. Yes. Amen. Yes, Willis. And Amen. Um, we, uh, at this time, would like to announce uh, our next uh, devotional. Uh, we are very excited. Uh, we continue on the topic of intimacy. Uh, we have a brother and a sister from, uh, from the U.S. in Connecticut. Uh, they've written a book uh, called uh, Building Emotional Intimacy. It's Jeff and Florence Chachinga, and uh, they have agreed uh, to do a devotional for us, uh, but it's going to be in the form of a, a workshop, so it's going to be on the 25th as well as on the 26th. Uh, so on the 25th, it's going to be an, an hour uh, starting from 7 until 8. And then on the 26th, uh, then it's going to be on the same 
slot that we've been using started starting at 2 o'clock up until half past 3. Uh, so as, as we approach that time, we'll post uh, the reminders so that you can be able to invite uh, some of the people that you think can be able to benefit. Um, but we, we definitely are excited for the, for the coming uh, devotional and then as well as for the one in July, uh, we also have another couple that will be teaching us on sexual intimacy. Uh, so I pray that God can definitely use uh, these speakers uh, that will be helping us to build uh, these different types of Im- intimacies in our marriages. And then at this time, I would like to ask uh, Spusiso uh, from Soweto, uh, Spusiso Mfusi from Soweto, if you can please uh, close us off with a word of prayer. So before brothers who see so closing and then we want to say the this uh, video will be available on our youtube channel central and then we'll also be sending it to your leaders in your respective uh, respective groups so in a matter of two days you will be receiving this uh, this recording so and also it's going to be on our central youtube channel and all the classes that have been done amen so Man. yes and um, Fusi, and then can you please close with a word of prayer thank you so much guys amen, amen. amen brothers and sisters um and let us go to god in prayer let us pray <clears throat> our father in heaven thank you so much for giving us this opportunity heavenly mm-hmm. father we are confronted with so many challenges in our marriages but father we believe that you are watching over us and we trust that even the Father, sticking to you, being always at the foot of the cross, you, Heavenly Father, will remedy whatever challenge that we have faced up with. We just want to bring all these marriages before you, Father, that we remember that you are the one that created these marriages for us, that we will seek counsel from you, Heavenly Father, in everything that we are going through. Heavenly Father, we cannot do it all by ourselves. We pray that you intervene. We pray that whatever, God, that is difficult for us to go through, that you, Heavenly Father, will walk with us. We thank you so much for uh, this great service that we have just had now, speaking about oneness, speaking about being intimate, Heavenly Father, as couples spiritually. I pray, Heavenly Father, that as we grow towards God, even our marriages will be growing closer and closer. I pray that whatever seed that has been instilled in us this afternoon, that will remain with us and will continue, Heavenly Father, praising you, worshiping you, knowing that, Heavenly Father, we are together in this. Be with us, Heavenly Father, as married couples. Strengthen our marriages. We love you, God. We thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for him dying on the cross so that our marriages can thrive. We love you, Father. It's in his Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you so much, guys. Thank Amen. you. Thanks Thanks Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> love you guys. You're awesome. Love. Cheers, Bye. everybody. Bye.